<laughs> I've got Darth Vader and I've got Matt Letizia with me. At last, we've had a few. Anyway, we're here. So, <laughs> Matt, welcome to the show, buddy. Good to be here, mate. It's good, good to have you here, man. Nice. So, today is the 9th of April. Yeah. We've just had the eclipse. I thought the world was going to end yesterday, didn't you? I, 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 did thought, a, I thought something was going to happen. Damn. You know. <laughs> I, I think did, something I didn't might actually think the world was going to end. I didn't think it was going to end. <laughs> I think, so I've said in a few shows the last couple of weeks, I think that we'll look back at yesterday. And I think there might be some things that get become clear as we go further away from it. Okay. That's what I'm feeling. Mm. What do you feel about it? Um, I tended not to take much notice of it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of fear-mongering going on um, uh, and I think that's one of the worst things that you can really do um, at the moment is be fearful yeah uh, it's not good for your health first and foremost um, and you know negative people feed off that energy so, uh, that's so true. Yeah, I tend to uh, I tend to take things with a pinch of salt these days that's not that's, that's you can't really argue with that <laughs> take it with a pinch of salt don't get fearful yeah you, you could you could do that you could do matter to taste so just like Steady, solid, crystalline, pure, keeps you happy. Keeps, keeps you happy, keeps, keeps you happy. grounded. Exactly, keeps you happy, keeps you grounded. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I looked at the eclipse. Well, have you what seen did, What did you see? Did you get set, watch it? Did you see it online? I did. Was it impressive? I mean, it I'm, was really impressive. I mean, I've seen an eclipse before, obviously, but. Yeah, it was really impressive. So, what they had, so. My mate out in New York, he, they didn't get full totality, but he was saying he got pictures from people in Texas. And he said, oh, it's like a donut. He said, you see the sun? It's got a hole, like a pinhole. Okay, yeah. Like a pinhole? What does he mean by that? Anyway, I saw pictures. So what he, what he meant was you had the ring. So you had it obviously dark, like a, yeah, yeah. The, the moon, and then you saw the ring around it. And then depending where you were... It's the size of it. Yeah, and it was, it was moving sometimes it got a little bit bigger and they call it the diamond ring. So you kind of get one side where you get this like, like a diamond and then a ring. Um, the one he sent me, he actually sent me, where is it? Is it on here? Let's have a look. Might be able to pull this up. It looked like a cross actually. The one he sent me in text, and no, now it's not come through. Um, the one he sent me, it looked like a cross. So it, it was a big diamond, well, a big ring. Mm. And then just the angle of it, it looked like, it looked like a cross because I guess the way that the light was reflecting at that particular time. Yeah. And then I saw a really great one of a guy, not sure what state he was in. He was just down in his front garden with people and they filmed it professionally and they had like a little local news camera crew. But that was incredible. So it was light and then you saw it moving over. Then it got dark and the street lamps came on. It was black. It was like this. And the weird thing about it was, not, I guess in hindsight when you think about it, it's not weird, but I noticed at the time the, the moon was just like black, like a black hole. Then you had this perfect ring around it, and then outside was black, like beyond the moon and the, the sun. Mm. But that was not as dark as the moon, which I guess makes sense because it was lighting up the atmosphere, whereas the moon itself was just super black. Yeah. And it was like, that was really impressive, and it was really detailed. Like the actual video image they had, it was like, there's some really good, you know, ones on YouTube. Yeah, there. I remember you know, it was kind of late '90s or early 2000s. Actually, being uh, training one morning at Southampton with a lot. It was um, yeah, 1999. The 1999. Eclipse. Yeah, clips. And, and I was so in we Greece were, when that was on. Yeah, we were training and, and, and we just we had we had stopped we stopped training. Yeah, and just everything just kind of gradually went dark for a, for a little bit and then did you stop again? Did you get a full totality? Or um, almost. I can't. I, I think Dan in Cornwall got I full totality. Remember, yeah, I don't, I, I don't remember seeing the, the full totality. I just, I can just remember a vague memory of it going really dark. Yeah. Uh, on out on the training ground mid morning. When yeah. The, yeah. And then, and then just for a few couple of minutes, and then off we go again. So we actually had to stop training, but I don't remember looking up at it to see it. Okay. Yeah. I think I had, and I don't know what it was like in Southampton, but I, because I was in Greece at that time in '99. It was August. I remember I was with a couple of my mates and my cousin Paul, he's now passed on, but we were in Greece looking up at it and it wasn't full, but it was partial. Right. And it definitely went like, you know, darker. Oh, like, yeah. And then you heard like the birds and stuff tweeting, uh, tweeting, tweeting, like chirping because <laughs> they, you know, it seemed like the sun had become dark. Yeah. Um, 
but I think from the reports, I think they were saying, I might be wrong on this, people. If you're in Cornwall, you can tell us. But I think Cornwall was the point of totality. Right. And I think it might have even been overcast, if I remember right. I haven't okay. checked it out. But I know in Greece it was bright, but it wasn't total. Yeah. But it still was quite unique, quite yeah, eerie. It was quite memorable, yeah. yeah. Quite eerie, yeah. Eerie is a good word. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd love to have seen that one. I think the next one close to us is in Spain in 2026. 20, right. 2026. So what do you think then, if you if you think something will manifest itself over the next few weeks or months or whatever, what sort of stuff are you, are you thinking about there in your head? Okay. What comes to your mind? So, I th so with the two, well, there's three actually, but you'll know that that line that it took yesterday went across a whole bunch of cities called Nineveh. And Nineveh is a biblical reference to, you know, you've got Jonah in the well, Nineveh teaching the people to change and repent. And so it's like, well, someone, however many centuries ago, when America was formed, must have built those cities on purpose. That would, that's, I mean, it looks like it to me, it's like, oh, that's, so it's like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? It's like, yeah, well, yeah. the eclipse would have been able to be worked out by astronomers, you know, thousands of years ago. Yeah. So whoever built those cities must have known about that because the other one they had in two, in 2017, the cross. So there was a cross and then there's another one. So it's, it's like a cross like that. And then there's another one. It almost like makes this kind of A, like an alpha yeah. thing. But if you take those two. Like the Freemason sign almost. <laughs> oh, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so someone knew, somebody knew. And it's like, okay, they're building, you know. So whoever built those cities would have known, okay, this is gonna happen. So you've got all the Nineveh line, which is the one that got crossed yesterday, and then you've got the other line, which is all Salem cities. Right. Now I've heard, I think it was yesterday, someone said Salem, it was on one of the, you know, one of, there's loads of videos going around, but someone said, apparently Salem means, I might be wrong on this people, was it, it went north of me over oh, over Bethlehem. There you go. See, it went over Bethlehem in New Hampshire. For, you know, so there's all these biblical cities on those lines. But someone said, and I might be wrong on this, but somebody said um, on a video that Salem apparently means something like peace bringer or something like that. Okay. I've not heard that before. And I guess with everything, there's a good version and there's a bad version. It depends on your interpretation. But to answer your question, what I think... In numbers, A is one, B is two, C is three. The 24th letter is X. We're now in the year 2024. You've got Twitter, changed its name to X. You've got these crypto coins, X. You've got X marks a spot. I think it's very interesting that, there's, that, was, that there was a huge solar eclipse, X, that was completed yesterday mm. over America. Um, Salem, even Jerusalem, and I know people go on about Israel. I think there's two versions of it. I think there's one that got infested and taken over. And I think there was an original, original biblical, you know, that's where Jesus did his ministry. Um, but even in the word Jerusalem, there's a USA in the middle of it. It's right in the middle. And this wasn't bang on in the middle, but it was across the heartlands of America. It was, you know, it was across the middle of America where this X was formed. Interesting enough, where this X was formed, I'm going to sit like this, where this X was formed, X marks the spot, there was a little town called Carbondale. So in 2017, the first one goes across, but there's an X there for the scaffold. But yesterday it completed, so where the other eclipse yesterday went across, the X marks the spot position, Rachel was there with her kids yesterday actually, it went over a town called Carbondale. In numbers, when you spell the word Carbondale, it comes to 99. 99 comes to ascension, comes to judgment. It also comes to patriot. It also comes to the number. When you spell out the word 13, it comes to 99. Yesterday, guess what number of the year, the day of the year it was yesterday? It was the 99th day of the year, 99. And next month's a spot on Carbondale and it comes to 99 in numbers. So I think a lot of these things were planned um, but I think you mentioned that group. 
whether it was them that built it or another shadow group that kind of mirrored them but was on the reverse a good a good bunch mm. whoever built those cities i think knew this juncture this point and i feel whether it was one group that maybe wasn't good did it to bring their stuff about i feel because i'm the eternal optimist i feel that good guys have used that i think god's used that in a good way now but it also could have been that it was good guys that built it in the first place. I guess we don't know yet. I, no. can't, I can't prove that. Um, President Trump has said this year will be the final battle. He talked the other day about the election. He was doing a show with Kerry Lake at Mar-a-Lago, a fundraiser for her. But then he talked about eternity. So he's saying, well, we've got seven months to this election. I keep going on about the election. And I think... Both sides know the importance of that day. I think somehow it's an X in the sound. I think it's a marker. I think it might be the thing that we want. I think it might be a victory of some description. I don't know whether an election is going to take place. But I feel that it will be a... I think it's something that's marked out. But to, to probably summarise, I think, I think God was using that. Whether bad ones did it years ago, I don't know. But I think a shadow group, either then and or now, has used that as a as a good marker for the people. And I think we might, things might start to improve as we go back, as we go forward, but we might look back at that point as a juncture. What do you make of David Cameron going to meet with Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago? Did he? When was that? Yesterday or this morning I read that. Was it? Yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. interesting. That yeah. is interesting. Yeah, I was like, hmm. That is interesting. What's he going there for? What's he doing? That's new to me, but I had heard. Does he know that Trump's going to be the next president and he wants to, but, you know. Might be, maybe, maybe. I didn't know about that. So some, I saw, I don't really watch the political stuff, so it's interesting you brought that one up. He might well know that. He might well know that. Um, and maybe they're going to put him in, maybe as the next one. I don't know. That's an, in, I guess watch this space. I didn't know about that. Mm. I didn't know about that. Yeah, interesting stuff. I've got some numbers for you, Matt, in regards to... So another piece of this puzzle. So there was the there was the original layout. Okay, first of all, I guess the eclipse was always going to happen. So that was known, however, many thousands of years ago that it was going to take place. Mm -hmm. People then built accordingly. They built those Salem cities and they built the um, Nineveh cities. But these are the two other things that were said. So it was announced that NASA blasted three rockets up yesterday during the eclipse all right to do whatever they wanted to do there's also reports that cern was doing something yeah i read that yeah yeah now i've got some interesting numbers on cern okay and this ties it back into our one the flux capacitor so people that don't know me and matt did a show last world cup actually it's around the time when i did one of my last lives i did one yesterday but i haven't done many so I was telling Matt about Back to the Future and the Flux Capacitor. And then Matt, like, new to me, said, yeah, Busted sing that song. They mentioned a, one of their songs talks about the Flux Capacitor. Yeah. And then... Year 3000. Yeah, the year 3000. About time travelling. <laughs> about time travelling. Yeah. And then around that time... Back to the Future had come on TV. It was when the World Cup was on. Yeah. And I was staying in a hotel at the time. And what had happened is I'd got in and was watching it on Plus One an hour later. Mm. And I text Matt. I said, Matt, Back to the Future's on right now. And he said, yeah, I know. I just saw it. But you'd <laughs> seen it an hour before because you'd seen the original. And it had come up with the flux capacitor and Back to the Future. Because you, I think if I remember right, you'd, you'd barely seen Back to the Future prior I to that. I hadn't watched it. No, no, I didn't watch it when it first came out. So yeah, he's, he's a great film watcher. Yeah, so we did the show on it, and then the synchronicity of it came up, and then it mentioned and it in the newspaper, front page it? of one of the newspapers. Exactly, yeah. and so it's like, ah, <laughs> something's going on. But this also ties into flux capacitor. So I'll share some numbers that I did the other over the weekend on it. So these are I had a look at it. So bear, bearing these, so we've got the eclipse, we've got the thing with NASA, and we've got the thing with CERN. This is what I've come up with. Okay, so. If you do matrix upgrading, it comes to 182 in numbers, okay. which comes to the flux capacitor in numbers, 182. A large hadron collider also comes to 182. 
And the Large Hadron Collider is the thing that yep. they do the creating these oh, wormholes. The particle. Yeah, at CERN. And then Synchronicity is 182. And me and Matt had our own version of Synchronicities with the flux capacitor. Because I didn't know about the busted song. Yeah. And he didn't really know much about Back to the Future. But then that week, <laughs> a few days later, we both see it. <laughs> Even separated by an hour, but we both let each other know about it. And then it comes out in the newspapers as well, a few days later. Yeah. Dark, okay. NASA was supposed to, they were saying they were sending these three rockets during the height of the eclipse up to them, back up the dark side of the moon, supposedly. Dark side of the moon comes to 182 in numbers, which comes to the flux capacitor, which comes to a hadron collider. Somebody sing about that as well. Yeah, about the dark pink, side pink, of the moon. Floyd. pink Floyd. Yeah, Another brick in the wall. The wall down in Yuma, three turned to Yuma. And guess what the wall is? The date that happened yesterday with the eclipse was April 4th. Sorry, April 8th. April 8th. April is the fourth month, so it's four. Eight is obviously eight. Four, eight comes to the word wall when you spell it wall, 48. Tom, 48. Trump kept going down to the wall in Yuma. There's a film 310 to Yuma. The 310th day of the year this year is November 5th, the election. November 5th is the date in Back to the Future when Emmett Brown, the time traveller, invented time travel. Wow. 148 Emmett Brown, Simple Gematria 148, Donald J. Trump 148, Time Traveller 148. So all these things come up, but there's a few more I found. So, so Dark Side of the Moon, Tesla Time Travel 182. Who's the, what's the question? Why do they sometimes spray? Well, trails in the sky is. Yeah. I don't know, we'll probably stay away from that one, but um, okay. have, a, have a think. Um, okay, Human Dark to Light, 182. Do you remember a few months ago, Evergrande, that institution in, in uh, China? Be, yeah. Oh, no, you had the, yeah, you had the Ever... That was the thing that got stuck in the Panama That was Canal, it, wasn't yeah, it? yeah. And then there's also Evergrande, which is also a financial institution in China um, that collapsed a few months ago oh, as well. Oh, yes, yeah, in the housing market. That's so, it, yeah. yeah. So Evergrande collapse comes to 182. Christopher Nolan, who in my opinion is a, a, a good white hat director because of the codes he puts in his films. He does the films about time travel, interstellar, tenet, inception with dreams. His production company is Syncopy, I-N-C, dot. If you do the dot, which is 39, you add those together, it comes to 182 again, which is a hadron collider, the flux capacitor. Dimensional reset is 182. So what people have been saying in the community is they're saying white hats are in control of CERN now and they use that with the powers of the eclipse to create a portal. That That's why I feel that we're going to see in time that we'll get, this will make sense what happened. Okay. Um, Which was the original question. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, but I'm trying to give you some context for it. But there's some others I'll share with you. So Intelligent Reset is 182, Dimensional Exchange 182, Lightning Strike 182, um, Currencies Reset is 182, November 5th Big Ben 182, where was the events of November 5th years and years ago supposed to take place at Parliament? Houses Big Ben, Parliament. yeah, Houses yeah. of Parliament. June 14th 182, that's Trump's birthday. The film Tenet, there's a key date in that film and they say it's the 14th. They don't say what month, they just say on the 14th. So it's like this kind of, but it looks like it's in the summertime. I think it's probably June 14th. Uh, the Exchange Portal is 182. Uh, Change Multiverse, 182. Turn to Jesus, 182. A lot of people have been doing that in the last few years. Mm. The Kingdom of Heaven is 182. New Jerusalem Law, 182. Real of Trump, 182. Time Jump. Eternal Time Jump is 182, and get this, so bands, you talked about um, Busted, there's another band, I don't know if you're a fan of theirs or not, Blink 182. Uh, I've heard of them, but okay. I'm not a, not a fan, yeah. Yeah, I've so, heard of them, yeah. Blink 182. Blink, if you spell the word Blink in numbers, it comes to 48. Yesterday was 48, and 182 is the flux capacitor, dimensional change, a hadron collider. I wonder, I don't even know if Blink-182 are aware of that, but why did yeah. they pick that number? Yeah, and why did they pick the word Blink? Have you noticed on Match of the Day, so here in the UK, 
me and Matt will watch the soccer at the weekend. And there's one of the commentators, he's closely connected with the uh, Man U class of 92, he's done documentaries with them, but he's now a okay. commentator. Do you know the guy? I can't think of his name. But he's one of the main commentators now, but he did, he kind of worked his way up. Right. I know he did stuff with the class of 92 back in the day. Okay. Um, almost without fail, every week he says, he brings it into his commentary. <laughs> he says, blink of an eye. He does it all the time. I don't know if you've heard that on Match of the Day or noticed it, but each week he'll say, he, when it's his game, he puts the phrase blink of an eye into his commentary. He's been doing it for weeks now. Okay. Um, so anyway, Blink 182, people talk about, you know, the world will change in a blink of an eye. Didn't seem to have happened like that yesterday, but I think that might be a precursor for where we're going. Maybe they have to do a few of these Hadron Collider things. Hadron, so Switzerland, where the Hadron Collider is, yeah. is 151 in numbers. Switzerland gets a bad rap, but if it's been taken over by good guys, Switzerland is also 151, Jesus Christ 151. Nuclear research, which is what that is, that centre, nuclear research is 151. Mm. Um, I, so I'm ever the optimist, but that's what I, yeah, I feel I'm, something well, like, yeah, has been I'm concocted. Well. In a good, yeah, you are. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm very much a, an optimist. And I, I, don't let, uh, I don't let fear get the better of me. And no, can't do. Live my life to its fullest. Tell us, if you're comfortable, tell us a bit more like your kind of belief, God, journey over the last few months if you're if you're happy to share yeah yeah no i because I, I remember our I've first show to church yeah i asked you about that you said yeah you went to church when you were younger and you know for well maybe i say yeah, younger on a regular basis not on a regular but now um, you've started going regularly yeah yeah i have a friend of mine uh, my old manager actually um his wife passed away back in the last year yeah um and initially i wanted to kind of be there for him he was a regular church goer um uh, and I wanted to support him, so I, I started going to to church with him. And while I was there, I was like, actually, I'm 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 getting this. Yeah. You know, I'm 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 feeling that this is. I feel really comfortable here. Yeah. Um, uh, and I felt like, yeah, this is this is for me. Um, and so yeah, I've, I've been going to church every every Sunday now. Um, since probably just before Christmas. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I'm mean, very early on in in my journey, but uh, but now I, I I definitely feel what's gone on in the last few years has definitely pushed me towards uh, thinking about things a bit more deeply, yeah, um, a bit more seriously. I was always, you know, pretty flippant in my life and very relaxed and easygoing and didn't really yeah. get bothered too much by anything. Um, but given what's happened the last few years, I've suddenly realised that actually there's uh, th there appears to be a, a real battle going on between good and evil in the world. Uh, yes. And I feel like I want to be on the on the right side of it. I want to be on the side of good. And yeah. And that's that's where that has pushed me to. Yeah. It's pushed me in that direction, uh, and I'm very comfortable with that. That's amazing because I I noticed. I said it to a couple of friends. I said to my brother as well. I noticed over the last couple of months you've mentioned you said our Lord and Savior needs to come back, and I was like. I've never heard Matt say that before. And then I only found out in the last couple of days you've been going back to church. So it's like, it makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. Yeah, the interesting thing is, um, is that uh, you know, in, in, in real times of trouble, Yes. Um, you know, you ask anybody, you know, if they're in, hitting real hard times, what's the first thing they'll do? And, and a lot of people will say, well, I pray. Yeah, yeah. And you go, well, who are you praying to? So I think yeah. there's something deep inside us that mm -hmm. that knows that there is that there's something more in this life. Yes, um, I believe that, yeah. um, uh, and I've, I've found it a really interesting journey. Yeah, good on you, buddy. I used to go to church growing up. Yeah, we had this conversation. I remember you telling me about it. Yeah. yeah, and now I don't. Mm -hmm. But when you told me about what you were doing, and you just go for like an hour on a Sunday, I was like, actually, that's a nice thing. And I was, I could totally resonate with with. The good side of when I would go, mm. and I don't have, you know, I, 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 I kind of just naturally, you know, moved on from it. But I can, I was like, actually, that's a nice. When you said it, I was like, ah, oh, it just it brought a nice kind of flutter of joy to me. I was like, because I, I totally resonate with mm. 
why people go to church. Yeah. And I've still got a faith in in God in the higher power and you know and I easily can you know talk about biblical and other scriptural references. It's part of the numbers for me, you know, it's part yeah. of my understanding. So I was like that's good on good on but and obviously you're a saint, you know, you paid for <laughs> <laughs> This is true. You know, you and Ricky. And what was my nickname? Le God. <laughs> Le God. Yeah. Yeah, which feels a little bit uncomfortable, uh, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> well, some other numbers. Okay, so if you do that, you're like this in the numbers. Okay, so our two truth are valiant warriors standing up for the people and the movement, as Matt would say, obviously, and Ricky Lambert. They both played for Southampton. The nickname for Southampton is the Saints. And they both wore the number seven shirt. And if you do seven, seven, 77, guess what that number comes up to? Christ. Christ equals 77. Wow. Yeah. And number seven, if you if you spell the word number, which is 73, <coughs> excuse me, which is children, it's a whole bunch of things, but number seven, actually yesterday, so solar, solar is seven as well, 65. If you do number seven, it comes to 138 numbers. 138 comes to turnstile which is you've got the football turnstile but in that film tenant i talked about they use that as a time reversal device okay yeah uh, my man trump is 138 donald trump um dome of the rock which is a spiritual place for christians muslims and jews they all claim that place is 138 number seven 138 the savior is 138 and even the pyramids which is obviously you know that's an iconic thing for lots of more well, history you know it's like one of the keys of the universe i think that's 138 as well so the savior 138 number seven 138 what do you make of the pyramids it's a good question <laughs> it's a good question how i know how 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 did ancient civilizations have the wherewithal to be so accurate in their measurements with how they built those things is just incredible have you, have you have you looked into that at all i've not in any real expertise or in depth but obviously it comes into my radar a lot i feel that those places are probably portals i think there's a good argument that it's based on tesla type technologies um i've seen and i'm not an expert on it but i've seen diagrams of what they say the inside the pyramids look like and that my buddy Jetson White, who's 138 in numbers as well, he does a piece on that on the time travel series. He does the Donald Trump time uh, travel series tied in with Tesla, because you've got these Baron Trump books, which is about time travel, and it was written 100 years ago, and mm. obviously Baron's his son. And But Tesla, they say that Tesla worked with Trump's uncle, John G. Trump. Tesla's inventions were passed on to um, John G. Trump, and they said it passed down the family. That's how they've been able to do this. But they say inside the pyramid looks very similar to um, Tesla's work on how to time travel. Now I can't prove that because I'm not an expert on it, but Jetson is very good on that, and he he shows yeah. that in his in his uh, show. I've also heard as well. Um, I mean, so there's the other thing of ancient civilizations that were far more advanced than us. Now that comes up a lot. Mm. You've got Tartaria. Tartaria was another civilization apparently, which was it's almost been hidden by like by another dimension. But you see evidence of it, you know, you, they talk about the mud floods and you'll be walking along and you can kind of see a building, you know, like a window that's kind of down by the pavement and stuff. Tartaria, again, is 88, which you have to travel 88 miles per hour to time travel in Back to the Future. Um, 88 Trump, um, 88 MPH. I, I, I was going to wear my T-shirt, <laughs> but I didn't wear it today. It comes to 125 time travel. Um, so I think, I'm, I'm all, I think it's totally possible that it, it's, I guess the way we do stuff, it's like you talked about backwards and forwards before we did the show, but ordinarily we seem to progress with technology and understanding at some level when we move forward into the future. But what's to say that we didn't have a far more advanced civilization, however long ago, prior, and maybe they're the ones that did things like the pyramids, I'm sure they are. It's like, how could you do that? It doesn't seem to be possible just from moving stone. They talk about levitation. You know, they, I've heard that they talk, they can move the, the blocks through through levitation and that's through the other physics. It's like, well, how on earth can you do that? I think there's a lot of technologies, a lot of knowledge, 
a lot of history that's Harry hidden Potter from us. There you go. Harry Potter could. Harry could Potter levitate things. Yeah. Harry Potter was on, um, and there's a hoverboard in the Back to the Future too. Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe, best lesson, was on another film I'd never seen him in before. He was on, um, what was it called? Angel City? Cities? Golden City. Um, which is actually, if it's right, if it's Golden City, that's 114, which is frequency in numbers. And I think that's probably how a lot of those things, levitation, is probably done through frequency. Mm. But I don't know, I think that's a whole branch of science that has been kept from us, but there seems to be people exploring it and maybe showing pieces of it. And I think as time goes on, I'm hopeful that we'll get more and more knowledge and practicality use of that. It's fascinating, well, isn't it? It is. What's, what's gone on in the past and yeah. we don't really know about it. Yeah, I think it's probably, it's we know a tiny smidgen of it, yeah, really. Yeah, absolutely. You know? What do you think about the pyramids? Um, well, I, I know that there's not just those ones in Egypt. Yeah, there's yeah, others around there's others all being over. found around the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they seem to be, I, I, I was reading something, that they seem to be all interconnected somehow. On ley lines. On ley lines. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know, obviously, without doing the stuff yourself, you don't, don't you know, don't for, know sure. Yeah. for sure. But um, I find it fascinating reading about that kind yeah. of stuff. And just having it as a, keeping it in your mind as a possibility. Yes. And, that's the, and I think that's the, the important bit about what's gone on the last few years. That's what I've found is probably the most important thing I've learned is to, is to not dismiss anything anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I think there's just yeah. so much stuff that goes on that we don't know about that if you kind of dismiss it out of hand without even looking at it, I think you're, I think you're a little bit foolish. Oh, yeah. I think there's so yeah. much stuff that in the past where we've been, we've been misinformed. We yes. were told it was one thing and it, and it isn't. Yeah. And it's something completely different. Um, and so I think it's important to, to keep an open mind on stuff. And uh, it's difficult to convey that on social media though. When you try, <laughs> <laughs> you try to say stuff like that on social media, everyone just goes, ah, oh, you're mental, you're mad. Yeah. You've headed too many footballs. Yeah. You know, well, I'm not saying I actually believe everything I'm just putting these things out there as possibilities. You're inquiring, and, you? and I have an inquiring mind, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I love to kind of yeah, yeah. just put put stuff out there and, and just see what people think, and then you, it's kind of how you it's kind of how you learn and evolve, I guess. Oh yeah. Um, and so, you know, uh, and I'm I'm quite happy to take all the slings and arrows that come with uh, with putting stuff out on social media that people disagree with. Um, I, I do find it fascinating, so some people's reactions. I'm not even sure whether, and this is the other thing, I, I can never be sure whether these people are actually real and that's their real reaction. That's true. Or if they're just, you know, <laughs> paid agitators. Yeah. So, no. uh, so I don't get too upset about it. You know, I find the block button quite good sometimes. Yeah. I'm the same, like, in, I'm always inquiring. I was talking to one of my buddies, Alan Supermac, if you're watching, you will be watching. Um, He's, and my friend Chad in the States has said, they've always, they've, and these guys have known me for years, so way before 2020, and they said, well, you've always been inquiring. You've always been inquisitive, always asking questions. There was a guy actually at school that um, he, I, was asked, I was just asking lots of questions about his stuff he was doing as a model maker, and he said, oh, 20 questions. He was like, that's enough questions. I was like, okay, but I naturally want to know. I find that the more questions you ask, yeah. the more you, and I, like you said, I don't dismiss anything. If someone was to say X, Y, Z has happened, I'd be like, okay, let's have a look. And I'd even find out it resonates, it doesn't, it's bunkum, or, and if I find out years down the line, it's not the case, I'm like, okay, that's fine. But I'm always, I said it in my very first video during the, the height of, you know, 2020. I just said, I just want to know the truth. I don't mind where it comes from or who it comes from or what it is. I just want to know. And that's what this journey is. Yeah. It's like just trying to peel back the layers, trying to figure stuff out, yep. not getting married to anything really, just trying to yep. see what resonates, figure out what it is. And I think, my little tip, I think if people have that attitude, I think that it will serve them well. It served me well, it served you well, you know? It's um, being yeah. inquisitive, you know? Yeah, being absolutely. Be inquisitive um, and, and kind of almost don't, don't back yourself into a corner where you where yeah. you just 
have one belief and you and it's like no that's it that's that's yeah. that's it and I'm not changing my mind no matter what yeah. evidence I'm showing I'm not changing my mind that's it that's yeah. my belief system yeah. Yeah, you've got to be you've got to be flexible yeah because you know, we don't nobody knows everything no um, and so be inquiring be flexible and then when you chuck don't in other scared yeah don't be scared and when you chuck in other things like other dimensions other timelines mm. other just other knowledge it's like we've got all this hidden stuff that went on here and then it seems to me like there's other things that are beyond the visible. What's all that? You know, even for the, the hard scientists, it's like they say, you know, the, the visible light's just this spectrum. So what's going on in all the rest of it, either side, and maybe up or down or behind, you know, forward or backwards? Mm -hmm. What's going on in that? And I think the exciting, one of the exciting things for me is through this journey, I've seen maybe little smidgens of things I didn't know existed. I'm like, because I used to get orbs in my videos. I'm like, where are they coming from? And then synchronicity, I'm like, okay, there's something else going on than just the visible world. And that excites me. That's what makes me, because I don't know what's going to happen each day. Yeah, but it's always exciting. It's always interesting. You know, when you say about, so you talked about pyramids. I've got a question for you. Um, a football question. And then I've got another football question after. But So the subject of vampires came up. We were talking about it a few weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, I did a show with Gene Deco. How are you linking this to football? I know this is interesting. Do you remember I said about with Klopp? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I did a show with Gene Decode, um, who's brilliant, look, source of information. He's great stuff. Okay, if you want to go down the rabbit hole, go, go down the rabbit hole with Gene Decode. Anyway, he started talking to me about vampires and how he'd had an actual interaction with this area in, in America of vampires. And he tied it into Abraham Lincoln. And there's that film, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. And I was like, oh yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. Anyway, a few days later, I put it on in our chat. It said, vampires are real. And it said it on the Daily Star. Now the oh, Daily Star, clipping, yeah. people say, oh, well, that's just the Daily Star. In my opinion, what they're doing is they're revealing these weird truths that we didn't know were real in meme in jest. So they're putting them on the front page of the Daily Star. And then I mentioned, it may or may not be, I don't know, but it had a picture of Klopp. When Klopp retired from football, when he said, I've got to, you know, I'm stepping down, and that's the end. The Daily Star, which I think is well worth looking at, they came out with this weird meme and they said, um, uh, what did they say? Fangs for the memories. So they made a caricature of him with a fang. It was like, what are they saying about him? Why would they do that? Yeah. I don't know. It was very weird. Yeah. It was very weird. <laughs> They've also done about him being Robo-Clop, like, like a robot. Anyway, Jürgen, you know, you've been a brilliant football ambassador, but I don't know. Why would they do that? It's strange. It's very, they do some strange things, though, don't they? Those they do some things. strange ones. They come up with some rather strange headlines. They do some strange ones. I, no, I do notice them, though, and I think a lot of it... Freddie Starr ate my hamster was one of my favourite headlines. Oh, yeah. When I was a kid. It yeah. always stuck in my mind. Like, That's quite a big <laughs> one, isn't it? Yeah. That's a big one. On the front page of one of the tabloids. Yeah. And I was like, really? What? Why? <laughs> this is a pure football question okay. and observation. So over your shoulder... You'll see Darth Vader. I know, it's freaking me out a little bit when I look in the camera, actually, because I feel like it's just going to get your sword out and just chop me Whack out. Whack Yeah. <laughs> well, the reason people say, why have you got Darth Vader? I was like, well, if you know the character's arc of Darth Vader, well, I have to admit at this point, I've never watched Star Wars. Okay. Well, Darth Vader, cut a long story short. Luke Skywalker's dad, hasn't he? That's it, Luke Skywalker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was actually did a show with Maureen Friesman at the weekend and she said, I'm a Skywalker. I was like, wow, I've had that there in the show for the last year or so. And they actually did a picture. So I quite often will do newspaper decodes, hold my phone up and show the, the newspaper. A few months ago, <laughs> I pictured Darth Vader holding up a mobile phone in the Daily Star and I was like, okay, I'll take that one. <laughs> um, but, this, but Star Wars, so the reason for that is it, it starts to like he starts off as a goodie. He then gets embroiled in the darkness, but then he gets redeemed at the end. And also, 
if I could have got a large Luke Skywalker like that from the charity shop years ago, I would have done. But I was only able to get the Darth Vader one. But okay. I like it, so that's why it's there. Um, and okay. also, consciousness is 175 in numbers, Anakin Skywalker in numbers. Anyway, but I've got a proper football question for you. The actor that played him, his name was David Prowse. He used to be the Green Cross Code Man. If you remember the advert from years and years ago, helping kids cross the road, the green. Yeah. Same guy, really tall guy. Anyway, there was another Prowse that scored from a corner at the weekend. James Ward Prowse. And then when I saw that, I was like, I know another guy that scored a few corners <laughs> in his time. <laughs> How many times did you score from the corner? A um, couple, I think. Yeah, uh, well, it's certainly in a professional level, but at a junior level, I scored loads. Like for my school team and right. teams and stuff. I was just shooting all the time from corners. Especially when the goalies were only about this high. It was great. <laughs> head it over the head. <laughs> all good. So has James, um, has he done that before? Has he scored from a corner before? Um, I feel like he, he may well have done. I mean, it's quite difficult to score direct from a corner. Normally it has to take a little deflection maybe on the way in. Yeah, um, but certainly with the technique that he's got, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he'd done it before. And he said there was a bit of wind that so helped. Yeah, get the loft and then bring it down. Yeah. So I've got um, I've got a uh, a couple of football questions for you, Matt, before we wrap up. Unless yeah. there was other rabbit holes you go wanted on, to then. go down. <laughs> no, we want to keep we want to keep this up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we've been all right. This has been good. This has been good. Um, so, one of which is, who would be your starting eleven for England in the Euros? If they're um, all fit, yeah. I mean, it's it is a it's a tough question because there's there's so many so many variables. That I, and I haven't probably this season has probably been the least amount of Premier League matches I've watched. Okay. Um, so I still I still watch it a fair bit, but not. You know, it's not my job anymore, so I'm, I'm not kind of across every single game like I used to be. Yeah. Um, but there are certain players in there that I would say are absolute shoe-ins. Yeah. Um, and so from, from that perspective, uh, you, you would say Kane, Bellingham, Rice, um, Foden, uh, Saka. I mean that those five. Yeah. I think for me are are, are absolute shoe ins Yeah. Um, I think the problem that we have is is probably along the defensive line. I think you've probably got Carl Walker if he's fit is also another shoe in. Yeah. We're going to struggle at left back a little bit. We might end up playing a right back at left back. Uh, so Do you Kieran, think Shaw will make it or is it touch and go? I think it's going to be touch and go. He's been out quite a while. You know, we're getting to the back end of the season. Not many games left. Yeah. So, um, you know, we may end up. I mean, possibly Chilwell. Um, Chilwell was playing blinders, wasn't he, back in? Yeah, he's, he's, a, good, he's, 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 a, he's had a lot of injuries. Yeah, he's had a lot of injuries. So, so I think the, our problems are going to be left back yeah. uh, and somebody to play alongside John Stones. Yeah. Uh, centre back, I would say, because obviously Maguire's um, he's not, in, not in the greatest of form. Uh, I don't know how people will say, well, he's never let England down, but. I think you get to a, a tournament of that calibre. Yeah. You, you kind of want players who have been playing regularly and playing well in your team. Yeah. Um, so I think centre back is. Uh, Who would you play centre back if it was not Maguire? <laughs> That's a good question. It is a good question, isn't it? Yeah, because I don't see. I don't see any outstanding candidates. Yeah. Really. I really like Maguire, but I know he's not had the best of times in the last few yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind him. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a good player. He is he's a good a, player, he's but he can get caught. He's, 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 you know what I think I like about him the, the most is his character. Yeah. I think he's a real yeah. solid, like, you know, when he yeah, busted that penalty, that. I think he's a real... There's something about him. Like he, I think he took a disproportionate amount of flack with that whole incident on holiday. And then it rumbled into, oh, he's playing. It's like, why are they picking on him? Yeah, yeah. What's he actually done? Yeah. Nothing. He busted that pen in. He's always been great in tournaments for England. 
Yeah. Why they're having a go at him, I was like, well, because he can take it almost. It's like, well, he's a proper solid bloke. And yeah. I think from a character point of view, I think he's really good. But I know what you mean about the last couple of years, obviously, he knows, everyone knows that. It's, you know, it's obvious he hasn't played as much. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, there's, there's enough talent in our forward players for us to seriously contend for, for this tournament, I think. Yes. What do you make of it? So I, I haven't seen too much of him other than recently. Um, uh, I've forgotten his name now. Who's he played for? Brentford. Ivan Tony. Ivan, yeah. Number 17, Q. Look, LE in numbers with this. So LE, 12 plus 5. 17, mm. Q. I was, he always stands out to me. De Bruyne wears number 17. What do you make of Ivan? I think he's a good footballer, yeah. I think he's really good. Yeah. I and really like him. I, I think probably just almost the fact that he is a good player. Yeah. Uh, but also the fact that if, if we go to a penalty shootout, I'd want him as one of, of my course. penalty takers. Of course. I mean, he is super cool from the penalty spot. He's really so, good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, just in the same way that I think then I should have taken me to the 98 World Cup because yeah. I was good at penalties. Um, you know, and there's all, there's always three or four players in a World Cup squad that never get a single minute's game. So why wouldn't you take a yeah a specialist penalty taker in case it goes to a penalty shootout? And you know, you can almost guarantee one out of your five penalties, which is you know twenty percent of your penalties are taken. So exactly, it's a big number. And the way you took that one just a couple of weeks ago was great. There at Wembley's first yeah, one, brilliant. Nerves, just took it the same way he did for Brentford. That's what. Yeah. Uh, that that's what people who don't who aren't intimidated by the situation that they're in that's what they can do they, they do for their country what they can do for their team so that takes me on to another question we joked about this we were having a good chat a few weeks ago and i said so matt to save the world it comes down to a penalty shootout yeah well i actually said it takes comes down to a penalty to save the world would you be up for taking it anyway before i'd finish he's like yep yeah, i'd be up for that <laughs> <laughs> so to save the world, this is the scenario. Because I used to joke when I was a kid, I was like, maybe it's a penalty or it's a free throw in basketball, and then you make it into heaven, basically. You know. So it's funny. I used to do that with with football when I was <laughs> training in football. Yeah. I'd step up and take a free kick or a penalty. I go right. If I, if I get this free kick in, that means I'm going to be a professional footballer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, your imagination just can go wild when you're a kid. It's great. Well, it stimulates you to take action, doesn't it? Yeah. You know? So, penalty, right, so this is it. So, penalty shootout to save the planet. Okay. Yeah. So, we've got Matt. And I know you want to be the last one to take the penalty. <laughs> but I'm going to flip it. I think you should be the first one. See, my manager told me that when I got involved in the only penalty shootout of my career. Yeah, and you weren't able to take it, were you? Uh, and I went, no, I'm not taking the first one. I want to take the last one because I want to score the winning penalty. It's when Giggs missed, isn't it? Yeah. So... Uh, so yeah, I, I I mean I'd still want to take the last one. I'd want I'd want I'd want to take the responsibility of having the most amount of pressure. Okay, but what if they? What if the dark side of? What if one of our guys is missed? Yeah. And then it's like you don't even get to take it. But then, does, would it really matter? Because had I gone first, the guy at the back was going to miss anyway. It's true, but so, it might have been less. It might have been less pressure. No, but there would be more pressure on him if he's at the back. There's more pressure. Do you think so? that's where all the pressure is? The pressure comes when you're taking the penalty to either win or keep your team in the in the shootout. Okay. That's the most pressure of any of the penalties. The first penalty isn't pressure. Do you not think? No, because the first penalty doesn't decide the outcome. That's true. If you miss the first penalty you can still win that penalty shootout. That's if true. you miss the decisive penalty, you lose that shootout, end of, no, no second chances. That's how I look at it. Well, I, I can see that, I can see that. I'd also trust Ricky Lambert to take the last penalty I was gonna, as well. I was gonna say, Rick, you get Rick. <laughs> so, I'd probably trust Ivan Tony as well, to be fair, okay. when he takes them. Yeah, I'd, I'd have you three taking them. And then another two from history to take the other two. Oh, blimey. So Ivan, if you're watching, mate, you're in, you're in the... Yaya yeah, yeah, Torre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yaya Torre was yeah, a good yeah, penalty yeah, taker. Yeah. He was. Um, and Eric Cantona. Who are? He, he was a good penalty taker as well. And he wore the 17 shirt, the Brazil 17 shirt. Have you seen that on Instagram? No. Yeah. 
No, I'm not on Instagram. I don't see. Why did he leave? Like Why did he do an exit? Did you think he knew something? I don't know. Eric, if you watch, come on, this is, you know, you're the French look god, we've got the Channel Islands, <laughs> England, Southampton look god, come and join us, you know? I think Eric knows something. I mean, he's, he's been a strong advocate of um, Julian Assange. Has he? He has actually, hasn't he? You're right, yes. He so has. Yeah, so he's got some clue what's going on. Eric, come, come, in, <laughs> come over, to, come brother. He does, doesn't he? I think he knows something. It's like, why did he just step away at age 13 in the height of his, mm. you know? He's always, he's always been a bit of a... Yeah, he's been, a a he's been yeah, different as a maverick, maverick yeah. but it just seems so strange. It's like, why did you get... Why then? Mm. And, and like, so you've, you've highlighted he's a friend. He's, a, he's an advocate of Julian. Um, I guess for, maybe that's one of those further down the line we'll know more. Um, I think inevitably we will. So Eric, okay. I'm going to put out a couple. Does Zidane ever miss a penalty? I've not researched this. Did he ever miss? Um, I kind of think if he... Maybe for Bordeaux. Done, if he hadn't have missed a penalty, we'd probably heard more about it. I'd have to look okay, up. Uh, right, I mean, yeah. He was a fantastic footballer. That was amazing. So I, I would imagine he'd be pretty good at penalties, but I, I, don't, I don't recall any stats saying that well, he never missed a penalty in his career. Right. Because, yeah, that's something that would have yeah. piqued my interest. Is there anyone you know that has got a better penalty record than you? Um, so he, 48 penalties, only missed one, scored 47. Yeah, Balotelli's penalty record was pretty good, although I think he, he then missed, I think he had a really good record, then missed two in a row. Did he? Um, but, you know, he was also a pretty cool customer. He was, wasn't um, he? From penalties, yeah. He didn't mind missing. That's the. I think that's the whole, the whole thing about penalty taking is. It takes the pressure off you, if you don't mind missing. That's that true. sounds really odd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds almost counterintuitive, but you actually, if the more relaxed you are, I think the, the more chance you got of scoring. Oh, totally. Well, I was when I was a kid, playing football. So I only played for the school team. And because I was religious growing up, I couldn't play football on a Sunday. So I didn't get to play in all the yeah. boys teams. I could only play in the school team. And because there was so much pressure, I put on myself to play well in that team. I played crap all the time, except for one year, I had a manager, Mr. Williams, bless him, he's probably passed on now, who used to always play me. And I felt relaxed because I knew I was going to be picked. And that's why later in life I got into like confidence and motivation, how to do that mindset. And that's why I've always been fascinated with it. Yeah. Because I suffered from it when I was a kid. So I was like, why am I playing so crap? I didn't want the ball. I was like, no, this is totally the reverse of what I could do. But that year I played well because he always picked me. And surprisingly enough, there were a couple of times, I only scored a couple of goals for the school because I'd only, other than that year, I played in defence. Usually yeah. I was a, a midfielder or a wing or, or up front. I only scored a couple of goals for the school coming on a sub but I did score against the best team and that was like the Barcelona I did this lob do you remember the guy for Borussia Dortmund that scored in the Champions League final and he kind of mishit the lob it's a it's great goal it's memory now it was, it's, it's early it's early Champions League yeah. and I think it was Borussia, it was a German team I think it was Borussia Dortmund and he goes through and he you can see he's mishit it but it's a brilliant chip right I did that against Cove who were the best team in the land all the all the uh, district players all played for them. Yeah. And I came on and, well, I actually started, I, this is how bad it, so I'd scored the lob, but I came off at half time. So that tells you, okay, you know. <laughs> I didn't get a touch of the ball other than them, but I scored a great lob and they were, but he took me off. Um, but then Mr. Williams, bless him, a year or two later when I played regularly, I was just in defence. But that, yeah, nerves. Uh, I think that's totally right. If, you, if you're okay with not missing, well, if you're okay with missing, then it will relax you. Definitely. Yeah. Cruyff. I've got one thing to end on with Cruyff. Yeah. Do you remember we were talking about him a few months ago? Yeah. Do you remember what I said? Uh, you said he... This is me saying this. It wasn't Matt, so you can't hammer Matt for this. This is me saying this. You can put it on me. This is, this is Tom Numbers' theory. Uh, you said he, he... You thought he knew something was... Yeah. ...up with the higher ups yes yes the reason for that I'm going to share it with you okay 
The reason for that is Johan Cruyff. Is that a question about Johan Cruyff? No, even the meanest bull can walk past a China cabin in a straight line. It's very profound. There you go. Think on that one. That's probably Eric. Um, so Johan Cruyff, people will know that he was the man of that. He was a brilliant footballer, a brilliant coach as well. He's basically kind of the godfather of the whole Barcelona uh, dynasty. Cruyff, he was Cruyff's mentor. There's been so many products of that system. Total football, Dutch football. Interesting enough though, that was under Rinus Mikkels. And there was also Lobanovsky in Russia. A lot of people don't know this, but around in the 50s, Lobanovsky was doing similar stuff with the Russians. And then it was Russia that played um, Rinus Mikkels' team in 88. And that, the Dutch won. But they'd been under Rinus Mikkels previously in those World Cups. He'd been okay. part of that. But yeah. you look at the Lobanovsky dynasty in Russia, so it was like two kind of versions of total football, communism and then free, the free artistic flair of the Dutch. Anyway, Johan Cruyff famously removed the Adidas stripe. So Adidas is three stripes. He removed the Adidas stripe from his Dutch kit. And because it was Johan Cruyff, they couldn't like bench him, you know, it was like... Okay, yeah. So what was he doing that for? Now, People on the surface will say, you know, I've read stuff about sponsorship deals. He ended up, you know, being sponsored by Puma. But I have a feeling that he knew maybe some things that will probably maybe come out in time. But I also have had this theory for a while, and I shared it with Matt. Um, but this, this isn't Matt saying it, it's me saying it. So any, <laughs> any heat is this, it's on me. 2016 was a bizarre year. I think weird things happen on leap years. European Championship and Olympics ordinarily will always happen on leap year. This one got delayed, the most recent one, because of lockdowns. But 2012, there was a lot of stuff going on in that ceremony in London. People have noticed since. 2016, the next one, you had Brexit. Trump got in power, he got voted in. Leicester, Leicester won City, the Leicester won the Premier League out of nowhere. And they nearly got the relegated the they nearly got relegated the year before. Yeah. They won the Premier League and they nearly got the relegated the year later. So that was a total anomaly. Then you had all those celebrity deaths. Loads of them. And bless him, Johan Cruyff was one of them. George Michael, just to refresh people's memory, George Michael, one of his songs is Last Christmas. He dies on Christmas Day. Carrie Fisher and her mum. They die a day apart. Princess Lewis Carrie Fisher, I met her the year before, well, I saw her the year before at the Force Awakens um, film premiere. Anyway, lots of weird things happened in, 20, in 2016. Then you fast forward four years and the biggest weirdness of all was 2020. We're now in 2024 and it's kind of been percolating. I think something super weird is coming in 2024, but I think it would be a good thing for people. Johan Cruyff was one of them that passed away. I'm gonna share some numbers with you. Okay, so Johan Cruyff, I should have sent this to myself. Just give me a second while I work this out. <laughs> um, I did this before. So Johan Cruyff, his birthday is, where are we? April 25th, okay? And then Johan Cruyff. You just have to give me a second while I work this out. I don't think I sent this to myself on this phone. As Matt's noticed, I've got a lot of phones. <laughs> uh, Actually, I might, I might well have done. Yeah, no, I haven't. Okay, give me two seconds. So, Johan Cruyff, Cruyff. Um, <clears throat> and then April. Basically, I'll, I'll cut people. I'll do it on the list. Basically, Johan Cruyff plus April twenty sixth in numbers comes to three six five. 365 comes to the Witness Protection Program. You heard it here first. I have a feeling that Johan is not gone. That might upset people. It might give people a lot of hope. I think he's not gone. I think he'll be one that comes and shares truth later down the line. I think there's a whole bunch of them coming back. Um, it's my feeling, it's my intuition. People like Diana, JFK Jr. Maybe even JFK, well, I say JFK, yeah. That sounds a weird one, I know. <laughs> but we've talked about a lot of weird stuff. But I believe Johan Cruyff, plus it's because that's what they do. So bad ones use numbers, but in my experience also, that I've learned over the last four years, good ones use numbers. Um, and uh, 
How about this one, November 5th? Return of Princess Diana, 88 miles per hour. Return of Princess Diana, 282. 282 is 88 miles per hour. And that's all to do with November 5th with this. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But that's my feelings. And I put that out as a little whatever, you know. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. If it doesn't happen. You can come after me. <laughs> but one of, our, one of our friends, Derek Johnson, so Derek, military guy, does great stuff. Me and Matt have done shows with Derek, and a lot of people like Derek's information. Hey, I've known about witness protection before, but he actually verified it. So if you go on the .gov website in the US, there's actually a witness protection program, and it says that there's 19,000 people in that program. And each person has three to six people around them at any given time. So that's quite a big program of people. Yeah. And if that's just the US one, Logic would suggest that there's probably similar programs around other countries around the world. Yeah. The question is, who are those people? The question is, why are they being protected? And could be some of them that are maybe well known. Maybe they could have gone into those possibilities of programs. That's my thinking. That's my feeling on it. A lot doesn't meet the eye on the surface, but when you investigate and then you have an open mind. But it's interesting, just have a look on the, on the uh, US website, it talks about the Witness Protection Program, 19,000 people, that's a, that's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. And if they've got three to six people around them at any given time. Mm. Also as well, masks, masks is another one. Um, you know, there's been pictures of old Uncle Joe in America, you know, pulling the back of his neck and it kind of sticks like a, like a mask. There's been that whole thing with Kate Middleton, you know, the last few weeks, they had a double, on one of the papers with her, and then she comes out with big news and everyone forgets what was revealed a day or two before. It's like they're hiding something. So my, the thing is have an open mind, as Matt said, and just look into it for yourself, but there is evidence out there. And then there's also esoteric kind of spiritual consciousness. And there's some things that just kind of come to people, maybe you take them with a pinch of salt or whether you, you know, have a little, a little flutter on the horses. It's up to you, so yeah. But yo, and if you're there, buddy, thank you. Nice one. Cheers, Tom. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that, Matt. Good to see you, mate. It's good to see you too, buddy. We got the show done because we had a bit of technical issues. So uh, we've got 77 in the chat. Seven, seven. 77 oh, is go. Christ. And 49, so that would be 77 plus 49. So it's 126, which is um, 107, which is Ricky Lambert. <laughs> Ricky Lambert. It's Ricky on the chat. It's Ricky, it's John Connor. <laughs> and now it's gone to 80, which takes you to one um takes you to 127, which is Ace of Spades, which is November 5th, November 5th. And there you go. There you go. Have a good day, Rob. I think that's a good way to <laughs> that's a good way to end the show. November 5th. Something's coming, everybody. I don't quite know exactly what, but hold on to your hats, because I think it's gonna be glorious. So God bless you, Matt. How can people find you? Twitter? Uh, yep. Get on the Twitter. At Matt Lattis 7. At Matt Lattis 7. Nice and simple. Brilliant. Good stuff. Annoying all the right people. <laughs> Who was that? Kenneth. Oh, it's the uh, French or Dutch. I'm not sure. Thank you for your message. So, bonjour, s'il vous plaît, au revoir. <laughs>